All right, when we last left our hero, we were concerned about the voltage sources and resistance. So today we're going to look at something called Ohm's Law. Yes, we start with a voltage source and we hook this up to a resistor R. Now, as we said last time, this should produce a current, I. And we indicated that the amount of resistance would have an effect on the current. Obviously, the more resistance there is, the less current flow, because after all, it's resistance to current flow. So if we start off with this source E, the question becomes, given values for E and R, what is I? Well, we can think of this in terms of an effect equaling a cause divided by an opposition. In our case, that means cause E voltage opposition is resistance aptly named and the effect is the current i is equal to v over r this is ohm's law named after georg ohm it's very often written like this v is equal to i times r either way right or you could write it in terms of r you know r would have to equal v divided by i which you would use this form if you had a voltage and you wanted to get a certain current and now you want to calculate a, a value of resistance to get you that current, right? That's the way you would use that. Okay, so for examples, right, let's just start with something simple. Let's say our voltage source E is 10 volts and the resistor R is 10 ohms. All right, so we have this polarity for the source, plus to minus, the current comes out this way. And of course, the current would then drop down and return back to the minus. So that produces what we would refer to as a voltage drop across the resistor, All right? This point, if we, if we assume the wire is ideal and there's no resistance in the wire, this point is this point, right? We think of this as a zero ohm, perfectly conductive piece of wire. And the same thing is true over here on the bottom. So this is minus, this is minus. It's the same point, right? But this polarity, as we'll see, makes a big difference. In any case, let's figure out what the current is. So I is equal to V divided by uh, R, which would be 10 volts, right? Because if we have 10 volts here and it's sitting directly across the resistor, then the resistor is also getting 10 volts the real question is what is the voltage across the resistor so 10 volts divided by 10 ohms is one amp of current voila all right now last time around we also looked at power law and we said power law p equals i times v so in our case we have one amp of current and the voltage, of course, is 10 volts. So 1 times 10 is 10, and that's in watts. Amps times volts is watts. We have 10 watts of power. Now, this is really important. Power generated must equal power dissipated. Power generated has to equal power dissipated. How do you know if something's generating or dissipating? Look at the polarities. So if I have a device like this, and the polarity plus to minus top to bottom, and the current is exiting, right? Exiting plus, that's power generation. On the other hand, If the current's coming in to the plus terminal, right? So it's entering plus, 
That's power dissipation. So, the battery or uh, voltage source, you know, whatever we have over here, maybe it's a lab source, this thing is generating 10 watts, right? It produces 10 volts and pumps out one amp, so that's 10 watts generated. That flows through the resistor, and the voltage drops. After all, this point is 10 volts above this point. This could be our reference. In other words, this could be our ground. And then the voltage drops back down to ground. So here we are at 10 volts from this point to ground. So we say this is a voltage drop, right? This is a voltage rise. This is a voltage drop. And that produces, like I said, uh, current entering the positive terminal, power dissipation. So what we generate has to equal what we dissipate. So far, so good, right? This would be true no matter how many voltage sources, no matter how many resistors I have. Power generation must equal power dissipation. What goes in must come out. That's a way of thinking about it. All right, let's change up some of the numbers a little bit. So suppose that um, we'll even change colors to do this. So suppose we bump the voltage up to 20 volts, right? Leave the resistor at 10 ohms. Just, just leave it. So what do we get? Well, the resulting current on here, same equation, now it's 20 volts divided by 10 ohms, it's 2 amps. The resulting power is going to be 2 amps times the 20 volts, that's 40 watts. Now notice we have doubled the voltage and we've quadrupled the power. Well, we can see that from power law, because after all, there's multiple ways of writing power law. You could substitute in the value um, for V over here with IR. In other words, P can also be equal to I times V, where V is IR. In other words, I times I times R. P is also I squared times R. You could Conversely, substitute in the value of I back here, in other words, V over R. So P is equal to V over R times V, in other words, it's V squared divided by R. All right, so what do we do over here? Well, we double the voltage, we kept R the same. Double the voltage, so that's two squared, four. Power should go up by a factor of four. And in fact, that is exactly what it did. Okay. Now, changing colors again. Let's bring that voltage back to 10 volts. And this time we'll, um, we'll change the resistance, right? Let's bump up the resistor. What do we wind up with? Well, current is 10 volts. Resistance is 20 ohms. So we get half an amp. What's the power? Well, you know, we could do it any one of these ways, but since we have the current and the voltage, right, I might as well just use I times V, and we have half an amp times 10 volts, which is 5 watts. All right, so, you know, this equation indicates that the uh, uh, power is going to be uh, an inverse relation with resistance as far as the voltage is concerned. So if we double up the resistance, we should have the power. And that's exactly what we see going on here. Okay. All right. That is the basic idea. Now you can replace this device, this resistor with, you know, any number of, of values. Um, and it always works out the same way. And you could sort of redraw this you know, in a slightly different configuration, but it's still the same thing. In other words, if I put the resistor over here and um, put my power supply over here, right, again, I'll just call this ground, my reference. So that's plus to minus. Current comes out of the positive terminal of the battery. It goes like this, plus to minus, right? So this is the rise, and that's the drop. So we think of it as going from ground 
you rise up a certain number of voltages of a certain number of volts and then you drop back down to ground right we're going to take a much closer look at this uh, in the next video but that's for now all you have to remember so we could just throw other numbers in here I could say well this is a 12 volt this is 1k ohm all right so what's the current well, it's 12 volts over 1K. 12 milliamps. If I want to find the power, you know, I can either do a V squared, 12 squared, over R. So 12 squared is 144, right? So I'd have 144 squared volts divided by um, a K ohm. So, you know, 1 over Ks is millis, so it would be 144 milliwatts. Okay? All right, or you could do, uh, you know, I times V if you prefer. So the current's 12 mils. The voltage is 12 volts. 12 times 12, again, 144 uh, millis, and then amps times volts is watts. So once again, 144 milliwatts. And, you know, lastly, you could do um, I squared times R. So I squared is uh, 12 milliamps. R is a K ohm. So that's going to get you 144 micro squared amps. Uh, you take the micro times the K and you're back to millis. And you got your 144 milliwatts again. Your choice, right? Whichever way you want to do it. So you can play with this. Um, really, with one resistor and one voltage source, you know, there's only so many variations you can make on a theme. But, again, to reiterate, the important things here are Ohm's Law itself, which we can write a couple of different ways, and the fact that the power generated has to equal the power dissipated. All right, and then finally we can sort of combine Ohm's law and power law. So there's three ways we can do it, right? The original way we looked at it, P is equal to IV, and then by combining Ohm's law, I squared R, V squared over R. And there you go.